Hi guys, today we'll be looking at the Midnight Horror Story. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm not making this video for attention, or sympathy, or anything. I just want anyone who can help me to do that. My name's Daniel, and this is a story I wish I didn't have to tell. I've been a night owl my entire life. As a teen, I used to stay up way past midnight every night, watching terrifying videos on YouTube. I know now they were nothing compared to the horrors of the real world. Nothing compared to the tragedy my family and I went through. The story I'm going to tell to you now. My parents, being teachers, had always emphasized the importance of sleeping well to me and would definitely disapprove of my late night routine. So I knew that if they'd caught me up at that time, I'd be in big trouble. At first, this wasn't a problem, but after I told them about a child predator in our neighborhood that I'd seen in one of my videos, they seemed to grow more and more paranoid, which was obviously understandable. Every night, I'd hear one of them wandering into my room, checking on me, and every night, I'd immediately turn off my light and pretend to be asleep. I never knew for sure if it was my mom or dad coming in, since obviously if I opened my eyes to see, they'd know I was awake. Mostly, I presumed it was my dad, from the heavy sounding footsteps, but either way, I found it pretty hypocritical for them to preach to me about being up late when they were awake themselves. Sometimes I wondered if they knew I wasn't sleeping, because often it was only after what seemed like hours before they'd finally leave and go to check on Alfie. That's my little brother. And Lucy, my little sister. I'd have asked them about it, but I thought it would have confirmed any suspicions which they seemed to already have about my staying awake deep into the mornings of the next day. Like I said, I guess they were just paranoid about the child predator. It was stupid, stupid for me to presume any of these things, and I'll never forgive myself for it, but I did it all the same. Anyway, one day, Lucy's school, where my parents both work, announced a school trip. It meant they'd be gone at some point next month from Saturday morning to Sunday morning, and it meant that I'd finally get to watch the horror movie my friend had lent me, that my parents had refused to let me watch. There was one downside, though. I'd be left to look after Alfie. He, being only six years old, my mom was reluctant to leave him in my care alone. But my dad defended me, reminding her that Alfie had been up most of the night after a nightmare, so he'd probably sleep most of the day anyway. Besides, he reassured her, he's 17, he could be given a little responsibility. With a heavy heart, my mom agreed. I honestly wish she hadn't. Finally, the morning came for them to head off. It took longer than expected because my sister said some of her favorite toy dolls had been stolen, but eventually my mom persuaded her that they were probably just lost and told me to look for them whilst they were gone. I begrudgingly agreed, and soon they were ready to go. As they were leaving, my mom gave me a stern word, reminding me to lock the doors, not go to bed too late, and take good care of Alfie. She told me she'd be watching through the security cameras to make sure I was looking after him properly. I told her she really didn't have to worry. Then we said our goodbyes, and they were off. Alfie and I spent most of the day playing outside, but came in after the frisbee landed near a strange man who Alfie said had been in his nightmare. I told him that that was ridiculous, because even if he somehow was in his dream, he wouldn't be able to remember. Anyway, I went by myself to get it, and I have to admit that the man was fairly creepy. He had a huge grin, and his eyes, staring right at me, seemed to be permanently forced further open than they were designed to go. His clothes all seemed to have been made from someone 50 years younger, as they struggled to cling to his fully grown body. It was cold, but he was wearing a sun hat, a tiny one for children which barely fit on his head. I recognized it, but didn't know how at the time. If I'd learned anything from the videos I spent my nights watching, I'd have abandoned the frisbee and left. But clearly I didn't, because not wanting to feel like a baby, I approached him. 
As I got closer to the man, his smile disappeared, and he removed the hat and held it behind his back. I began to see his features in greater detail. He looked tired. He was pale and his eyes were bloodshot and had huge gaping bags under them. In the entire time it took me to get to him, the man didn't move an inch, other than the odd blink. Not even his eyes shifted. At this stage, I was getting uneasy. I just wanted to get it and leave. Hi, can I have my frisbee back, please? Thanks. The thought of that conversation, if you can even call it a conversation, still makes me shiver. I locked the front door as soon as we got home. We were both a bit shaken, and Alfie looked tired, so I gave him some more food and put him to bed. It took him about two hours to fall asleep. He kept complaining that he'd have another nightmare about that man. I told him he would, but he wasn't convinced. I see him every night. He whispered to me. Well, if you see him again, don't worry. I'll be here to fight him off. This seemed to settle him down, and soon he was fast asleep. At about 11, it was time to put my film on. I couldn't have my mom knowing that I was watching it, so I did something naive and ignorant, and something I'll always regret. I turned off the security cameras. I watched it for two hours straight, my eyes never straying from the screen. Until... I replayed the last few seconds of the film, but the sound didn't happen again. It was coming from inside my house. Alfie? He didn't reply, but I could see him under the cover, so I thought he was just asleep, and I didn't want to wake him up. I swear, if I thought anything worse had happened, I'd have checked. You okay? I thought maybe I was just worrying too much, hearing things. It was late, and the film had been scary. Maybe it was just all in my head. I knew from the sound of his voice it was him. Alfie! Alfie? Usually this much noise would have woken him up. Alfie, what's going on? I knew something was wrong. It was him. The doll. I couldn't believe it. It had to be some kind of sick prank. It had to be. But it wasn't. It was the man I'd spoken to earlier. He'd taken my brother. Alfie! I was certain they'd be gone before I could reach them. But he didn't set off straight away. He watched as I tried helplessly to do something. I screamed, and I shouted, and I banged on the windows, and I tried to open the doors, but nothing worked. It was all in vain. There was nothing I could do for my brother, my best friend, as he was stolen away from me. It was too late for the police to do anything. It was too late for anybody to do anything. He was gone, and in time, I'd have to come to accept that. You have nine new messages. First message. Hello? If you're out with Alfie, call me back when you get back in, please. Love you guys. Bye. End of message. Second message. Daniel, we've been trying to get a hold of you for hours. Is everything all right? Did you turn the security cameras off? They'll be fine. The security system probably just glitched out. Hey, Alfie. Just call us as soon as you can, okay? You know how Mom worries. End of message. Third message. Listen, Daniel. We're starting to get really worried now. If you don't pick up, one of us is going to have to come home to check if everything's okay. Please pick up. End of message. Fourth. 
Daniel, are you okay? Daniel! What's happened? Please answer! I couldn't bear to tell them anything. That was seven years ago. We never found him. When I asked my parents if they'd seen anything at all of this man whilst they checked on us during the night, they only looked at me, concerned and confused. What do you mean? They asked. I could only stare at them in horror. Every night, around two, he'd come and check on Alfie, Lucy, and me to see if we were sleeping. Daniel? They told me. No, no we, we didn't. didn't. The police wanted security camera footage of the man, but of course, there wasn't any. It automatically deletes any footage older than 24 hours, which meant I'd been mindless enough to stop it recording on the only night we could have seen him. You know, the strange thing is, I don't even know if I want Alfie to be alive. Because if he is, God knows what that monster has done to him. Sorry if I've gone on too long, but the guilt's been killing me. I had to get it out somehow. I only tell it as a story because, well, people like stories and I want as many people to hear this as possible. Alfie, if somehow you're watching, I love you and I'm so, so sorry. Please don't lose hope. And to the man who took you, it's not too late. If you have any heart at all, and even if you don't, please, please let my little brother come home. To everybody else, if someone comes into your bedroom at night, open your eyes. You never know who it might be. I still stay up late at night. <laughs> It's not because I don't want to sleep. It's because I can't. In case anyone sees Alfie, this is the last good photo we took of him. That's it. Stay safe. <laughs>